we're a tank. And we're killing people. Yeah, that's a thing now. Cheers, Zos. Hey, it's Dan. And welcome back to Unified Gaming. In today's video, I'm going to break down the Reflector. It's basically a proc tank. It is so busted. But this build embraces the dark side. It uses proc sets and it does it to a very, very efficient level. This is designed to basically take damage you receive and reflect the damage back. You know, nothing new there because of Harbringer and stuff. That's really obvious. But what makes this special is that we have two other like proc damage sets and Malik have. So we basically have three damage proc sets and a mythic item. Like, how do you even do that? Well, I'm going to show you in this one. And you can do use this kind of approach in other builds. It's just absolutely nuts. And with Stone Thorn around the corner and new proc sets, you can get incredibly creative now. So that's the thing, Zos. Thank you. But with this one, I'm going to break down, you know, the gear, the skills, all the stuff you need to know. Do you pay close attention? Because it's really important that if you don't get the skills right, it's not going to work. If the armor's in the wrong layout, loadout, it's not going to work. If you don't have the right consumables and poisons and stuff, it's not going to work. So do pay close attention to that. And before we jump in, if you want to see us live, we do actually stream on the weekends on Twitch. There's obviously a link in the description. And I just want to say a massive thank you to the patrons before we start. Like, honestly, you guys are really, really helping me just continue to make videos. So I really, really appreciate that. And if you want to help support myself or the channel, there's a link in the description. But with that out of the way, let's just get into the video. So for the race, I'm actually a Nord on this build. And a Nord, in my opinion, is probably one of the best kind of races for this. You get armor, stamina, and alt gen, which is awesome, and health. So it's just like everything you need. And Argonian is a really good option because of the potion passive. Imperial's great as well. Any race can work, to be honest. It's just proc sets, but those races are just a bit better. As for the attributes, I'd have 26 in Magicka and 38 in Stamina. You can put some in health if you wish. But ideally get around you know, 18 to 20k Magicka in no CP and in CP. And in sort of stamina wise you want about 20 to 23k for no CP and CP. The regions are on 1000 each. They go up with skills and poisons and stuff we use. So our Magicka recovery is almost 2000. And our stamina recovery is actually a bit higher than that as well. It's about 13, 1400. So you know the sustains are actually really good for potions and buffs. So yeah. And then for the Munda Stone, I actually use the Serpent on this build. So this is really helpful. It just gives a stam recovery. You could change this if you like. I personally find this the best, so it's personal choice. As for our consumables, we actually use the Bewitch Sugar Cells, which is Tristat food. So any Tristat food is possible. This is just the best. You could use Crown food. You could use just generic Tristat, but health, magical, and stamina. We then actually use Tristat potions. These give us health, magic, and stamina, which we need all three of those. You could also carry some immovability potions and add on anything you like. Stealth detection is quite funny to chase Nightblade, they hate it. You could also use, you know, get magicka or health or stamina back up to you. I would probably go with Essence of Immovability with magicka back because if you're CC immune, you can just heavy attack to get your stamina back anyway. So that's if I went with immovability pots, but I personally prefer try stat. As well as that, we actually use poisons on this build. So I'm actually using Drain Health Poisons, and they give you health, magicka, and stamina back, which is just really, really cool. And they put on light attacks, heavy attacks, weapon abilities. So just really, really worth getting these if you can. But they are a real game changer in my opinion. So get those if you can. Now, before we jump into the skills, if you haven't guessed it, this channel is all about helping you get better with builds, guides and gameplay. So why not start improving today by subscribing and clicking on the bell so you don't miss anything. For those skills, on the front bar we use Arctic Blast. This is our burst deal and it's a stun so that's always nice and it does a bit of frost damage which means we can snare people with the other skills we use and immobilize so this is really good. We then have gripping shards which is basically talons but ice. It immobilizes people, it snares them, it applies chill to them, it's really really good. This synergizes really well with the wall of frost we use. We then have Shimmer and Shield, which makes us immune to range damage. And it also gives us major heroism, so we can get like crazy, crazy alt gen, you know, chuck out trees, chuck out Northern Storm, it's really good. So definitely run this. The other morph isn't as good in my opinion, so yeah. We then use Spiked Bone Armor. This is like the cherry on the cake. 
So what this does is it's a damage shield that scales with health, which is awesome. And it's a stamina based and it reflects damage, which is why we call this the reflector. Basically, anything that hits us, we take that damage and we send it back. Plus a little bit extra because of just how this works. It's got a synergy for allies as well, which is always great. So this is just a great, great skill to get. This actually comes from the Undaunted skill line, just so you're aware where it comes from. It's down here. So definitely get this if you can. And obviously do get your, your passes if you haven't got them already, but they're just helpful to have. We then have Bird of Prey, which is Major Expedition, if we use it. But just being on the bar is Minor Berserk, which means it increases our proc sets for free, which is awesome. And on top of that, if we go into Animal Companions, the passive at the bottom, Advanced Species, increases just our damage by 2%, which again increases our proc sets. So this one skill here is 8% plus 2%, so we get a 10% damage on our proc set damage boost, which is just crazy. So this is really, really good to have. It's partly why I chose a Warden. We then use Northern Storm, and this is the better ult in my opinion. It's damage, it's a snare, and it's major protection, so it's really good. And with Shimmer and Shield and being a Nord, we can pop this really, really quick. So, yeah. For the lap bar, it's pretty straightforward. It's Ice Fortress, which is armor and minor protection. We then use Blockade of Frost. This, the damage is okay. It's mainly here for the chill, the fact that we can chill people and then immobilize them if they're chilled just has great great synergy with whipping shards and arctic blast these two skills come from the winter's embrace skill line and what's really nice is that the glacial presence passive increases the chance of apply chill to the enemy which means this and this will apply chilled if the target is chilled and they walk on top of the blockade of frost they get immobilized so it's like free immobilization when this is down so this is incredibly powerful and it also procs our poisons on cooldown, so it's basically free sustain, which is great. It snares people, it immobilizes them on cooldown for free, it's just amazing. And then we use Elemental Drain, which gives a major breach, so we do more damage with procs, which is helpful. We then get Minor Magic still, which is why I use it. So it's just free, free sustain, and it's just bonus damage, so why wouldn't you run this? We then have Ball Netch, and in my opinion, this is the better morph. What this does is it gives you um, a stamina sustain when you block. So as you're blocking, you actually regenerate stamina back, which is really helpful. So you can block for a bit longer. We then have Leech and Vines, which gives us heals when we get attacked. And we also apply Minor Life Steal to the person attacking us. And because we use AoEs around us all the time, we prop that Life Steal pretty much on cooldown. So we get like loads of free healing from this skill here. And it can also prop this passive down here which is called Nature's Gift. When you heal an ally, which includes yourself, you get magical or stamina back. So that basically gives us stamina or magical back whilst we block, which is incredibly helpful. We then have Healing Ticket, which is a kind of a burst heal. This could be changed to something else if you really want, but I personally prefer it. But that's the skills. The one skill I would maybe change is Elemental Drain. In the older versions, I have tried using Deep Thoughts. And although it's just absolutely amazing for kind of recovery between fights, I personally find Elemental Drain better. It's more damage and it's better sustained whilst you're in the fight, which is what we need. So this is just perfect. I'm now going to go through the gear and stuff. And this is slightly complicated. So do pay close attention because if you mess this up, it's not going to be as good as it could be. We have three damage proc sets and a mythic item. So yeah, you gotta pay close attention, okay? Before this, we are using Harbringer. This is not, you know, this is not news to anybody. If you're unfamiliar with this set, this comes from the Imperial City. You can trade it for Telva. You can trade it with other players too. When you block, you reflect damage back. That damage is based on your max health and it's getting a buff next patch, which is awesome. So if we proc our minor toughness, because we are... So if we proc our minor toughness, as we're awarding, you see this value actually goes up. So if you stack health, this can get to like five or six K easily. What makes this really special is that when we block an attack, it procs. So things like Templar's jabs, for example, although it's one skill, because it hits you with three or four different strikes with that one cast, it procs on every single strike. So if a Templar hits you with jabs, this will proc three or four times in that one second, which is just crazy. 
If somebody hits you with rapid strikes, exactly the same thing. If somebody lands a combo, they might do subterranean assault, dizzy and swing into medium wave. That's three skills there instantly. This will proc three times if you're blocking. As we saw earlier, we also use Bone Shield too, which means if we have this on, we reflect damage based on them hitting the shield. And because they hit the shield, which is technically us, this also procs as well. So they double proc, which means we get damage from the shield being reflected and damage from this set being reflected, which means we can reflect like six or 7K damage per hit, which is just crazy. So it's a really powerful setup. And as I said, this procs on any damage source that we can block. So even false poles, your fire, shock and frost, this can proc three times with that one cast. And if the glyph goes off, that next four times it will proc in that one cast, which means you can melt people at range if they use your force pulse. If Templars jab you, they just kill themselves really quick. If somebody hits you with a combo, they'll kill themselves really, really quick. So it's just really, really strong. We actually use sword and a shield in the front bar. Infused frost glyph. The frost glyph can proc um, chilled. And if they're chilled, as we saw earlier, we can then immobilize them with blockade of frost for free, which is awesome. So that's why we use that. We then have obviously the shield. This ideally should be sturdy. I'm just low on transmutation gems. Health is the best glyph for this in all honesty. So sturdy if you can. If you're somebody going, I don't have the sword or shield, you can trade this. You can buy this with Telf with a bit of gambling and hope you get it. But any two piece here could do so. It could be a frost staff. It's really good. It could be a 2H for goodness sake. Just anything that gives this set two pieces on this front bar. And then what makes this really special is we pair this with Stormlight. Stormlight gives us armor, armor, health. And when we take non physical damage, we have a 10% chance to deal basically 5,600 shock damage every two seconds for six seconds. This can occur every six seconds. So, what does that mean? Well, if we get hit with fire, shock, frost, magic, disease, poison, any of those kind of abilities, this will proc. So stamina necromancers using blast bones can proc this set. People using poison injection can proc this set. People using poisons anyway can proc this set. So this can proc on magicka or stamina. Magicka will proc this quicker, but stamina can still proc this, which is amazing. So what we do is we have harboring on the front bar for, and that's always for always active five. When we go up to there, we then go to the back bar when we need this. So we go back bar, turn on stormlight, get the proc. It's a buff on you, which means we can swap bar, and then. And what's special about stormlight is that because it's a buff, the buff is on the player, which means when it procs. It's tracking the player, which means you can swap bar. And as you can see now, this is only three P's active, which means we still get the bonus that the damage from this. But because we have a you know bird of prey on the front bar, this goes up. So this is basically six thousand, which is just stupid. It's every two seconds for six seconds, so it procs three times. It's basically eighteen thousand damage in six seconds as an AOE. You see how busted that sounds. And you can buy this. This comes from Stonehaven, if I recall. So it's a really, really good set to get. As I said earlier, we do use poisons on this bar. So do get those poisons there. We then pair this with Grothgar. And I have all heavy, seven heavy on this build. You want ideally try and stack on the chest, head, and legs. I don't quite have it on the chest yet because I'm a bit low on money. And these should be really sturdy or in pen. And you want to have at least four impenetrable and three sturdy and then you can go with a bit more if you want with the shield it's up to you we then have health on all the small pieces as you can see but try to start on the big pieces ideally for the jewelry we then use harbinger and malakath we have healthy and their stamina recovery and magical recovery for the malakath it's an infused magical recovery so to kind of go through how it's set up now so it works properly, we have to have Harbinger Sword and Shield front bar. Could be a Frost Staff if you like. We then have Harbinger Chest, Legs, Neck and Ring. So that's four, so that's one, two, three, four, always on. The front bar's five and six. On the back bar we have 
Storm Knight, Frost Staff. We then have Waste, Hands, and Feet. So that's one, two, three, you're always active. But when we go to the back bar, the staff counts as two, so it's three, four, five, which means that this will turn on five pieces. This then allows you to get the Malakath in, which is what makes this really, really OP. This increases all of the proc damage by 25%, which is just so, so broke. What's really good about Malakath is it buffs all of our damage by 25%, so you can't see it on tooltips. So this is 25% stronger. This is 25% more damage. This is effectively 25% more damage because of how it scales. This is 25% more damage. So our tooltips are pretty respectable, actually. That's 25% more damage. So our skills hit somewhat okay, but it also buffs the proc sets, which means if we go to our Harbinger, that's 3,554 plus 25% on top on any attack we block. Our Storm Knight is basically 6,000 plus 25%, which is now like 7, 8,000. So it's now doing 21 to 24K every six seconds. You know, that's loads of damage. Our Grothgar, 2,467. That's got 25% more damage on top of it as well, which means it hits even harder. So what makes this really busted is Malakath. Now, if we don't have this, this still works. But this just makes it even more OP. So if you have Greymore, do get this. And if you're somebody who doesn't have Greymore, then consider getting Greymore if you want. Just play the build without it and just have, you know, harboring it on at all times. That's how I'd fix it. But that's kind of the gear. It's a bit more complicated than normal. Go back, rewind it, watch it again. It will really help you out, but they need to be in this order. As long as Powerbringer is active five piece front bar, Storm Knight is active five piece back bar, and you've got Grothgar always on, and Malakath, you've done it right. Now I'm gonna go through the CP, and as I said at the start of the video, this is better in Battlegrounds. It can work in Cyrodiil, it can work in Imperial City. Better in Imperial City personally than Cyrodiil, but it's not bad in Cyrodiil for things like door fights and stuff where you get hit by loads of things really quick. But for the CP, this is what I use in jewels. It's, you know, pretty nasty. Feel free to pause it where you like. There's one point spare in the green tree. Just chuck it wherever you see fit. Just to note, the spell oration does increase our proc sets, as does this, so just bear that in mind. Master at Arms also increases our proc sets, which is awesome. So does Piercing, because it increases the Harbinger. So does Mighty, so we get loads of damage boosts with procs, it's awesome. Generic red CP here. One thing that's really helpful is Unchained, so you can, like, if you can get this, get it. Basically, when you CC break, your next stamina ability is free to cast. And you've probably guessed it now. We CC break, we go straight for Bone Shield. It's basically a 6k shield, and if we put on our minor toughness, you can see it's 6,400 roughly. And it will reflect damage back if we get hit. So this is basically like a free burst heal if we get stunned and it will damage people if they hit us, so it's a really good thing to use in jewels. So, yeah, definitely get Unchained because it's just really good synergy between those two things there. But that's the CP, as I've said. Now, the last thing I do in all of my videos is go through tips, tricks and stuff. But before I do that, I have noticed that like 70% of the people watching right now are not subscribed to the channel. We, you know, we're on almost 8,000, so if you're somebody who watches our reg like you watch us regularly, do check if you're subscribed. You're probably not. As for kind of tips and tricks, I find personally that you need to kind of fool your targets. And by that I mean that people will think you're a tank because of your health. And you are, you're a tank. So anybody competent will not attack you. But what you have is stupid crowd control. You have Arctic Blast, which is basically a free stun if you just stand next to them, which is awesome, and it's AoE. So you can stun, stun them on demand. You have Gripping Shards, which is immobilized. You can immobilize them on demand. You have Blockade of Frost, which if they're chilled, you can immobilize them. And as we use a charged Frost Staff, this procs almost instantly, which is just nuts. So basically our job is to lock them in place and hold them in place so they can't move. And they have to eat our Grothgar and our Storm Knight. And then what you want to do is damage them and attack them so they don't think you're a tank. So I normally buff up with Ice Fortress, Ball Netch, Elemental Train on the target, or targets if there's more than one. Go in, chuck it down, Blockade of Frost. 
This will proc our poisons on cooldown. And I then I light attack them and I switch to the front bar. When I'm nice and close, I do gripping shards and then Arctic Blast. As Arctic Blast is going off, I don't hold block usually unless they're attacking me. If they do attack me, hold block and push the bone shield whilst you're holding block. It does cast it. This will then reflect damage, your Harbinger will, like, will reflect damage and you will just melt people. If they don't attack you, you then light attack them and bash them. And what will then happen is Grothgar will then proc, that's 2.5k damage plus Malakath is like 3k nearly which is really 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 high and it's around you you then switch to the bat bar by this time they normally attach you at least once your storm knight will proc at some point which means you will then have this going and grothgar going and most people will either attack you or run away if they run away you can go to your northern storm northern storm and just light attack them as you're chasing them and what will normally happen is they will try and flee they will run away and you use Northern Storm and chase them. It snares them, it does good damage with Malakath, and your Grothgar's going off at this time, and you simply light attack them. If they try to fight back, hold, like, tap block. What will happen is, they will hit you back, Harbinger will proc, and then they'll get hit with you know an extra two or three damage, two or three K damage instantly, which is really, really high. And if they do attack you before any of that, just hold block and cast Bone Shield. And they're going to kill themselves as you see in the footage time and time again good players sometimes die from this but what you can do is stop them from killing other people by just lock them in them like you lock them in place i get so many hate whispers so much hate mail with this build people call me all sorts of you know rude words i can't say on youtube but because you know they're good players and i just snare them and immobilize them and stun them on cooldown they can't kill other players and if they try to kill me, I just reflect the damage back, so they have to run away. And if they're somewhat not experienced or just kind of not paying attention, they end up killing themselves anyway, or they die to the procs. So top tier players won't die to this, but they can't kill other players because of snares and stuns you do. Anybody who's average or new to PvP will just get melted from this. And if there are any Templars, and God help Templars, because Bone Shield that goes crazy, Harbinger goes crazy when somebody hits you with jabs. It's just so much damage, so quick as you've seen in the footage. But like, you see Templars, they just blow up because of how much damage we do. And as I said, if they don't die, the procs just finish them off most of the time. But that's kind of what I do to kind of damage people. Staying alive is really easy. Keep your armor buff on, keep your vines on. Elemental Drain is always good to keep up with Bucket of Frost on the floor because it will give you resources to recover. You then hold block and basically spam Arctic Blast. It heals you. If you're out of Magicka, push Bone Shield. It's basically the same size as your heal. If you're kind of low on both resources, cast a potion. If you're low on both resources and you don't have a potion, you can check out a heavy attack, then Bone Shield, heavy attack, Bone Shield. You get the idea. You might even go to the back bar and just shut down the blockade of Frost if it's run out. Heavy attack, Bone Shield. And what will happen is the poisons will prop with the wall of frost you'll get the recovery back and you can bounce back quickly with your heals if all of that fails you then have access to your trio which is what i love if they're a magical user and they're using range just cast slabs instead you're basically immune to range damage it's really op and if for all, some reason all of that stuff fails and you still can't recover shut down blockade of frost walk through it and then as you get to the other side, cast Bird of Prey and Sprint. What will happen is the Blockade of Frost will snare anybody following you. And because you're at Major Expedition, you can run away quickly. And then you've got time to recover around the corner, get some AOEs on the floor. It gives you a good two or three seconds breathing space, which is normally enough to bounce back on this build. So that's how I stay alive so long. I've had a 22 kill streak on a tank build. But 18 to 0 in battlegrounds, you know, this thing is stupidly, stupidly busted, but incredibly fun to play. But I'm actually going to wrap this video up here because it is long enough as it is. So if you do like these kind of videos, then make sure you are subscribed. And as I said, I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons just once again. It's really, really appreciated, guys. So obviously do keep up if you can. But with that said, guys, I'm actually going to wrap this video up here. It's long enough as it is. It's more complicated. If you need any help with this, just jump into our Discord, send me a message and I can help you as best I can. But with that said, 
and we'll catch you in the next video or on Twitch if you join us. Thanks for watching, take care and bye.